Hi guys, Bomber here. Welcome back to the channel. And before we start, I use thank you to all of my Patreons. If you want to join them and start supporting me, the link to my Patreon is in the description and the comment pinned down below. And with that said, let's jump into the video. So yeah guys, in today's video we're gonna be looking at 4 budget decks for new players, which can start to play the game, also learn those decks are meant to be educative in terms of the unique mechanics of Legends of Runeterra, while also being kind of fun or competitive like the last one we're going to be seeing. But yeah, this is those cards are almost uh, uh, always used in very competitive deck, so and they're also kind of cheap, of course, as the video says, so don't worry too much about crafting those, because uh, sooner or later they will um, be useful for uh, more competitive decks. Uh, the, uh, I just assembled those decks, uh, except the last one, which is actually pretty competitive, uh, although it is budget, uh, so that you can learn the mechanics. Uh, so, with this deck, uh, we see there is a Mono Demacia uh, mid-range, basically, and uh, it basically has a lot of challengers, uh, because uh, if you are familiar with Arston, uh, then basically with Challenger it becomes uh, the same thing. The, the combat system becomes the same thing as uh, uh, Arston, basically, because you can choose what to attack. And uh, so yeah, it's pretty educative to shift uh, the, that like um, uh, mechanic, that system, uh, to a new one, which is not uh, as similar. But uh, with this mechanic, it is the same, basically. And uh, on top of that, uh, um, Demacia is uh, pretty known for being uh, pretty efficient uh, at uh, casting uh, very good value creatures, uh, or actually units, uh, as they are called in uh, Legends of Runeterra. And uh, so yeah, you want to flood the board with a lot of units, uh, then you want to buff them up with Vanguard Bannerman, granting all other allies plus one plus one. And uh, yeah, with Challenger you can take a lot of um, value trades, uh, you can uh, um, basically remove uh, a smaller unit uh, and while yours uh, stays alive uh, thus uh, leading to a mid game uh, where you are overwhelming the board with uh, units uh, while your opponent has none since you just uh, value traded all of them thanks to challenger and all the combat tricks uh, that uh, Demacia has uh, barrier basically uh, the, the quintessence of uh, um, value trade because you are uh, shielding your uh, unit from damage it is basically divine shield from Aston. instead taking a look at the second deck uh, this is gonna teach you how the, the, the speed of spells work uh, this deck has a lot of spells uh, both slow uh, fast and uh, burst if i the meditation for example burst so that they they're gonna teach you uh the, um, the, the, the as i say the speed of spells and also the order thanks to card which deny other spells like deny itself or nopify on top of that uh, you have a lot of tools to remove uh, aggression so you can like interact with uh, what you do when they open attack you can interact with that with fast speed spells so that you can uh, basically learn how to uh, answer some threats uh, um, while even if you don't have any units on board, you can still do something with fast spells, so you don't, you don't have to worry, you can uh, plan your next turn based on the fact that you will have answers in your hand, thanks to, sp to, to spells. And as how this deck wins, uh, since you really don't play units, uh, uh, not that much, you can play very um, like uh, value uh, units like Solitary Monk, which has a huge drawback if you have other units, but if you don't have uh, units, then Solitary Monk is completely insane. And on top of that, since you have all those uh, spells, uh, you can cast for pretty cheap uh, or even for free the Plaza Guardian. So that, that's uh, those are your main win conditions, elusive damage and uh, the Plaza Guardian. Then we see the Poro deck, uh, which is basically the the most free to play friendly. Uh, or, but like all this game is free to play plan friendly. But like this the budget ver budget deck for um, uh, for definition. I added some uh, more costly cards. Uh, for example, Give It All, because this deck is meant to teach you about all the the mechanics, the the keywords that are there. And if you have a Give It All on top of that to basically give all the units uh, all the keywords, then you can see how they interact with one another. So it, it's pretty good educative for that reason. And uh, but you can remove that uh, and um, be even more um, budget. Um, or you can add uh, Brom, uh, this champion here, and uh, probably, I don't know, for Brom for sure, 
Uh, but yeah, since those are budget decks, uh, I didn't uh, include Brom, but you can upgrade, of course, those decks. And uh, yeah, the, the game plan here is pretty simple, you just want to play a lot of Poros, uh, they are pretty cheap. Uh, you can also draw, thanks to Poro Herder and uh, Call the Wild. Then you want to buff them up with Poros Next. And then once you have a lot of um, Poros in, uh, in the board, you can either finish the game with Art of the Fluff, which will uh, on itself uh, gain all the keywords. Uh, and all the stats, so basically this will be a pretty huge body with also Elusive uh, if you have uh, the Daring Poro or the Daring Poros Summon from the Poro Cannon. Those are the, your main Poros to look for because you want to give uh, Elusive uh, to Art of the Fluff uh, to basically deliver a naughty K. Uh, or if you don't have Art of the Fluff, you can simply go for Give It All and uh, basically all the Poros will uh, get over all, all the keywords. So it's probably even better if you can give all the Poros all the keywords because uh, you're not uh, weak to single target removal because Earth of the Fluff is pretty weak to that. Instead, if you have a white board, you're weak to AoEs, uh, especially board clears like Renation, but it is probably a better win condition rather than Earth of the Fluff. Of course, it takes a bit more. Bonus points if you cast at Battle Fury the turn before, and so that uh, you will have a very, very huge uh, unit uh, which will give its stat to all the others. So yeah, pretty fun deck, and the Poro decks uh, are always uh, in... Uh, like uh, in the back of your mind when you want to uh, have a budget deck when the new expansions uh, releases. And finally, this is probably the most free-to-play friendly budget deck, which is also pretty competitive. In this deck we actually see three champions, Elise, and uh, two epics, Captain Farron. You could remove the Captain Farron and even Elise if you really want to just start building this deck. But again, this deck is uh, pretty powerful. Uh, it is an aggro deck, a burn deck, so like the, the, the fastest uh, aggro decks that, that are there. Uh, you, you try to deal the most amount of damage in the early turns, thanks to, to all your uh, one drops, uh, especially Legend Saboteur and Precious Pet. Then you continue doing that on turn 2 with Arachnoid Horror, uh, our Spider and the Legend Grenadier. And you continue even more by going into Freds and Caesar. It depends if you are going first so that you, you attack on uh, odd turns or if you are going seconds, uh, second and so you attack on even turns. Uh, but yeah, like you have to watch out for cards uh, which you want to play the turn in which you are attacking. So for example if you are going first you heavily want a 1 drop and a 3 drop. If you are going second, you heavily want a 2-drop and a 4-drop, because you can play a unit the turn that you are attacking. Of course, if you have a smooth curve, then that's even better. But as I said in my introduction, basically, to Legends of Runeterra, you don't feel too bad about uh, um, like uh, not spending all your mana, because uh, that mana goes to the, to the mana spell, the mana bank, which you can use later on for burn spells, like Nox and Fervor and Decimate, or the Decimates generated by... Um, Captain Farron, so that you can finish off the game by burning your opponent out. Pretty solid deck, always has a spot in any kind of meta, and I don't think that you, this will ever change, really. I always see uh, some kind of Elise burn uh, re-emerging into the meta uh, for, from season to season, so like, uh, uh, crafting this deck is a pretty safe bet at uh, basically ensuring that you always have a meta deck uh, for every season, for every expansion that releases until you expand your collection more and you can craft even more and more uh, and probably even better meta decks, but this is a solid start. So, okay, now we're gonna do some games with all the decks that we talked about, uh, so that you can see a bit how the deck feels like. Uh, in the Mulligan you always want to have something to play in the early turns, uh, but since this is a mid-range deck and you want to have some uh, beef, you know, on the mid-game, then Screeching Dragon is really, really good, uh, because it has Challenger, so you can take value trades with it, uh, as well as Fury, so that it can grow bigger and bigger. And uh, yeah, Vanguard and Redeemer instead is a pretty early turn unit, uh, but we did in the end got a pretty uh, good curve, which is uh, well, how this deck is built, basically, to have a good curve. So yeah, we start with Cedar of Cloudfield, the 2 2. By the way, I should mention that this is probably a bad attack, by the way, because we can take a value trade here, you see? Like, he went for the, uh, this attack, but I can choose what to block it. So, like, uh, these dies and these. Uh, 
uh, survives with only one, hand, one health because my attack goes to his health and this attack goes to my health. But anyway, I was saying that I should mention that if you want more content like this, uh, that guides tutorial uh, from a master tier player, uh, consider subscribing to the channel and also turn on the notifications because otherwise YouTube won't notify of my content. Also, yeah, I have a stream channel if you want to check that out and have a live interaction with me so that I can basically teach you the game on the fly. You can also do that. All the links to my socials are in the pinned comment down below and in the link in the description. So yeah, like now, we gave barrier to this unit, which means that he couldn't take damage. So like he summoned uh, some units uh, at burst speed, because you know you also have to know about uh, the, the speed of the of the spells basically. And uh, yeah, he blocked instead my 3-2, but we took a value trade on that. So Draven is a champion, which is pretty threatening. So you want to try and remove it. We can do that by going for single combat, which is a fast speed spell, which, which I can also cast like it is a unit or a slow speed spell. Like, you can always cast fast speed spells, basically. And, uh, like, here, um, we probably want to uh, remove that by single combat, which says an ally and an enemy strike each other. So, basically, it is like uh, they attack into one another, you know? But since Raven had quick attack, if it was a real attacking and blocking situation, then quick attack would have dealt damage before my unit. And if my unit died, which was the case uh, however I blocked it, then uh, it would have... Um, uh, my unit wouldn't have strike, struck, struck back. I probably say that in a wrong order. But yeah, I guess that uh, you know what I mean. So now instead we restart with a Grizzled Ranger, which has Scout. So this means that when I attack uh, the first time every round with Scout's units only, like I did, then I basically get um, another free attack. But now it doesn't really... Um, it is not good enough for me to attack here. Because if I attack, you have to consider how could he block your, your unit. And he could block it with any of, of, her, of, of their units, you know? So like uh, here, if I was in my opponent, uh, I would block it with the 1-1, one -one, you know? This is the most efficient trade for him. And so do I want him to block my unit with the 1-1? One -one? Probably not. So I don't want to trade the 3-1 for a 1-1, one -one, you know? So like my best bet is to not attack here. So like you, another very important thing in Legends of Runeterra is knowing when to pass. Like you don't have to feel bad if you can't do anything for a round. Better luck next round, you know? But uh, yeah, you have to know where to pass. So like, also another like, um, so yeah, this is just challenger. So that trade would have happened anyway, you know. But at least uh, we we played around it. Um, another thing is always play on curve. Like this is uh, rarely you you wouldn't want to to play on curve, and this is uh, the case. So that's why you went for screeching dragon. So like here is the thing: if we block the draven, then the draven deals three damage. Uh, to the 5 health unit, so this doesn't die, and then the unit, my unit, deals the attack to his uh, health, and basically Draven dies in the end, while my unit doesn't. But if he has, for example, a fast speed spell, which he can cast uh, during combat, for example a Mystic Shot, a fast speed spell which deals 2 damage to anything, he could deal 2 damage to the Screeching Dragon before the combat happens, because the, the stack here, the spells, uh, resolve before the, the combat, so basically the Screeching Dragon will be a 4-3 by the time the combat happens, and then Draven is gonna deal 3 damage before my Screeching Dragon, basically killing the Screeching Dragon before he can strike back since this has quick attack. So, for all those reasons, it is probably a safer choice to just block it to 1, so like, let's see how this goes. So yeah, he gave Spinning Axe to this, basically he with plus 1 attack, and yeah, he had in fact, uh, a spell to to remove basically my Screeching Dragon. But uh, if we did it like this, at least uh, we removed the 2 1 as well. By also having him basically waste uh, uh, use that resources. That resource. Uh, instead, if we were to block the Draven, uh, the Draven would have still been alive as well as the 2 1, which we didn't block. So, like, I probably think that we did the right uh, thing here. So, like, again, we probably want to go for the Screeching Dragon uh, again, play the most uh, uh, mana out of our hand. But we can also go for Fleet Feeder Tracker if we go for Screeching Dragon. Since Fleet Feeder Tracker says when you summon another ally, grant me Challenger, which is basically a beneficial effect, then the order is, of course, going for Fleet Feeder Tracker first. 
so that you can give the Pit Little Tracker Challenger, which could uh, be useful later on. Okay, so he went for Guile, which is stun an enemy. When an enemy is stunned, uh, or a, a unit in general, it can't uh, attack or block, and if it was attacking or blocking, then uh, he still can't attack or block, and so he, he returns back to the back lane, you know? So, like, in this occasion, it was not attacking, but still. So, like, now we can safely attack with the Loyal Badger Bear, because if he blocks with Draven, then basically Draven dies, and we are left with a 3 4, with a 3 1, sorry. If he had a removal, then probably still Draven would have died. And so, uh, it was uh, uh, always good for us. Okay, so he's dealing with one to all enemies. So the Fleet Leader Tracker dies, which is sad, but uh, we don't really care all that much. We can go for Vanguard Redeemer, which says, when I'm summoned, draw a unit if an ally died this round. Which is the case right now, so let's go for it. Okay, now again, for the same reason, we probably don't want to block Draven, but now I can show you something, if, uh, as before, he has a combat trick to uh, basically kill the Screeching Dragon without uh, uh, the Draven dying. So let's see if he has a, a trick or a spell. Okay, Brother's Bond. So you see, like, here, again, since the quick attack uh, strikes my unit before, then my unit can strike back, you can see also another useful... Um, uh, thing is the Oracle Eye, this is how it's called, it, it basically shows you um, what is gonna happen, like uh, whenever when everything is resolved, what will be the like the, the board state, so for example you can see that those two trades with one another, so that's why they, they are dead basically, uh, instead the, the Draven kills the Screeching Dragon before uh, the Screeching Dragon can strike back. If we go for repost, not only uh, all the attack of Draven is going to go on the barrier, and the barrier, by the way, says negates the next damage the unit will take, last one round. But, uh, as I said, the, the five damage will go to the barrier, then uh, Draven would have already attacked, so the quick attack is out of the way, and so the Screeching Dragon can strike back, finally. So basically, we have uh, um, uh, inverted the outcome of the battle, you know? Like, so you see, Draven attacked before, and the barrier uh, was destroyed, but then, of course, the Screeching Dragon had to strike back. And now we are in a very uh, great position, you know, we can uh, like uh, push even further. Now we could have a winning attack, you know. So, like for example, here we, we won. Uh, we, we calculate and it's little damage. Even if he has some answers, we could still continue with Relentless Pursuit attacking again. So, yeah, okay, he has a, he has a blocker. So, like, we probably block the 6 6. That's fine. But again, now we can go for Entrance Pursuit, which says Rally. Rally means that you get back the attack token. You can all, you can use it either to when you already attacked on the, the turn in which you have the attack token to attack again, or even when it is your opponent's turn to to attack, he has the attack token. You can still get the attack token even if it wasn't your your round to attack, so that you can take your opponent off guard. And so yeah, now we should have a winning attack. Let's see if uh, yeah, so we won uh, this, uh, this game with the Reaper and the Massive. Okay, now it is the time of the Piltover and Zone Yonia deck, uh, the, the Contour 1 basically, which can be useful to learn how to counter spells and uh, abilities and stuff like that. So like this end, uh, I kinda like it, because uh, I want to have answers to my opponent's spell, and Close of the Dragon really synergizes well with uh, casting a lot of spells, which our deck is good at, so let's actually keep uh, those. So you see that uh, when you're playing a control deck, uh, you will start taking damage, but you have to take advantage of banking mana. So for example here, we could uh, cast the Close of the Dragon, but uh, we know that these uh, later on could be free. So, like, we are in a sense wasting uh, two mana by going for this, since we know that this will come later on uh, for free. Instead, we could bank the mana, since uh, we know that we are attacking, so our opponent uh, can't attack us this round, you see? And now, if he goes for the attack, uh, we can cast spells, you know, to, um, to remove the attacker, and also now we are going to, to cast two spells so that the Close of the Dragon will be played. So, Gotcha, say, instead, would be a 4-mana card, but it says when I'm drawn, 
uh, cost 2 less this round, deal 3 to a unit. Since these deal, deal 3 damage only to a unit, and we are not sure if our opponent will cast another unit, instead Mystic Shot will deal 2 damage to anything, also the Nexus, so it has a target, then I probably think that it is best to go for Gotcha here, because if he doesn't cast a unit, we can still play the Mystic Shot, therefore play 2 spells and uh, go for the Closed Dragon. Again, now we can't pass and wait if he is going really to cast a, a unit or not, because if we pass and also our opponent pass, the round ends. So like you, you have to consider always if you are happy um, if the round ends. But when you are passing, you have to consider what if my opponent passes back, you know? So like here I'm probably not happy if my opponent passes back because I want to cast those two Claws of the Dragons and so in fact you see that our opponent uh, would have passed if we didn't go for the Mystic Shot immediately. So like yeah, we did a perfect turn. So now we have to consider the Deep Meditation again is uh, cost less the more spells that we cast or we could go for King Cool Life Blade. Uh, but again, we will uh, lose uh, the, the bonus on the Deep Meditation. Since I probably would rather have uh, the Deep Meditation, I play the Deep Meditation now, uh, then uh, it is better, like, it doesn't really matter because I, I'm going to show you, this is Burst. So this basically means that I can cast it and it is still my action, like my opponent can do anything about it, like you're seeing here. So it is still our, our action basically, and we can go for the open attack now. Open attacking uh, basically means that uh, you are starting your your action, your turn, uh, basically, your round, sorry, uh, by open attacking, like uh, you, you go with the attack before doing anything else. So like again, since here the, the gotcha is a bit like... Uh, uh, cheaper, we could try and start dealing damage to Yasuo, which is a champion and one of his win conditions, so that then if later on we draw some Mystic Shot or whatever, we can finish Yasuo off. So let's see, he goes for Brother's Bond, granting hit attack, but doesn't really do anything. So like yeah, unfortunately I'm playing against an AI so that uh, I can be, um, my opponent is gonna be faster, so of course since it is an AI, my opponent is uh, not playing as efficiently as he could, but still, this uh, probably serves to get you the point, you know? So like here we, we are taking the damage. We don't really care about losing, uh, sorry, about losing health, really, because you can also uh, get it back thanks to lifesteal. That's the word. Yeah, lifesteal. And uh, instead we want to have uh, Ali's uh, uh, units on board so that we can go for uh, the kill, basically, and put in pressure. Okay, went for Guile, which is uh, kind of bad, because this stuns an enemy, and I could be fine with that. But you see that Yasuo uh, says, when you stun or recall an enemy, I deal two to it. So basically it's gonna kill the King Kool Life Blade, because this is gonna be stunned. And you see the, the thing that I want to show you, Nopify. Stop at three cost or less spell. This costs one, so this is a good target, and basically stopping means that this effect won't happen. And in fact you see that uh, this unit will not be stunned, or be killed by Yasuo. So let's go for this. This is one of the strongest concepts uh, about uh, casting spells and stuff. Now support also is pretty interesting. You see that a unit with support will give an effect to the ally uh, on, the, on, a on his right, on her right in this case, uh, when he's attacking. And the effect is give my supported ally, so basically this one, uh, quick attack and plus one plus zero this round. So like, uh, we could give quick attack to the 3-2 and then attack also with the elusive, because in this way uh, the elusives can't be blocked by, uni by units which don't have elusive, so basically these are unblockable for now. And uh, they're do doing 3 damage and also healing us for 2 thanks to the King Crew Life Blade. And if it is as quick attack, this means that uh, she's gonna um, deal her attack before the Yasuo. So like in this case, Yasuo can't really block without dying. So like if he doesn't want to take 4 damage here, no he has blood. to sacrifice the Yasuo. Or he has to do some tricks, like in this case, recall an ally to summon a living shadow in his place, but again, we can deny that, so that we can remove the Yasuo. The knight basically is the same, okay. So now this is interesting, because you see something that I also wanted to show you, the order of spells. Like, uh, uh, last served, uh, last arrived, first served. So like, this is the one, the last arrived, you know the recall, and this is gonna be the first one that activates. So like, the recall is gonna uh, recall an ally, which basically means uh, uh, she's gonna return to the end, he's gonna return to the end. So this happens first. 
it, it goes to the end, then the deny stops the shadow shift. Shadow shift doesn't happen because we denied that, but in the end the Yasuo will not be there anymore and so the Claws of the Dragon will not attack into anything, so like you see here. Also there is, there is also a kind of interesting concept, uh, which is like if a Eunice was there, you see this didn't attack because when it was attacking it was blocked by a unit, which was Yasuo. Then if uh, the, the unit dies um, meanwhile during the attack, or if uh, he returns the hand or whatever, then you saw what happened. Okay, so now this is kind of bad, because not only those are gonna be stunned, you know, and also killed by Yasuo, because Yasuo deals two damage. But again, we can recall the Yasuo to the hand, so basically Yasuo, since this is gonna activate first, before the staggering uh, strikes, Yasuo will no more be there when the staggering strikes, staggering strikes happens, uh, therefore not killing our Claws of the Dragon and uh, King Ku Life Blade. They will still be stunned, as you see, but the Yasuo will not deal two damage to each of them. So like this uh, is probably a good move here, because we want those units to, to stay alive so that we can go for the kill, you know. So let's see if he goes for the attack. So like here we have to consider, if we are blocking now, then we are not taking 6 damage, but we are also dealing 3 less damage next turn. Since I want to go for the kill, it is probably best to take the damage here, because uh, we have a wider board, you know. Or we could have blocked and then went for the value trade, basically. But I kinda like this line more. And and then now finally we can go for Plaza Guardian, which is our big finisher, you know? Okay, yeah, another Yone. Basically, uh, slowing us down again. But at least now there is no Yasuo in play. And so we can uh, go for it. Okay, now as you see, we have double elusive. And we are also healing for a bit uh, by granting, uh, giving it attack. And then unfortunately the solitary monk is not so great right now. Okay, now you see also an interesting thing. When champions level up, we don't have any champions really into our decks, if not for the last one. So like you saw that now the Yasuo quest um, activated basically, was accomplished. And now this is the, the leveled up version of Yasuo which says when you stun or recall an, eye, an enemy, I strike it, basically dealing its attack and not uh, only 2 damage, now it's gonna be 5, but you can buff its attack, so like you see there is synergy also in there. So like yeah, now we don't really benefit from playing any other unit, because uh, 6 is the maximum amount of units, and so we don't want to, to uh, destroy one of our units to, to play another one. So like now, uh, unfortunately the young witch is gonna die, we don't want to take all this damage because uh, otherwise we are dead, uh, but I, again, since this is quick attack, I don't really want to take the value trade either, I want to quick attack with it so that I can trade with it. And so yeah, let's just, uh, so like here you see, he had a trick which basically would have made my plaza guardian die, so like, uh, by going and, and the Yas will still be alive. So like now we could go for something, we could uh, go anyway for the Solitary Monk and then replay all our stuff because we see that we have lethal if the Solitary Monk and one of the Kinko Blade connects. So let's go for this instead. So like now we have lethal basically. And also why not, let's go for Close of the Dragon because we have already a uh, full mana spell. So we, we are wasting that. Okay, Nobify as well. Kinda interesting. Since we see a Nobify, so we have a bit of counterplay if uh, he goes for something, then let's develop uh, the biggest threat, more threatening, most threatening bird that we can possibly have. And then let's see how this attack goes. Those elusives can't be blocked, so let's see if he has a stun of some sort. Okay, he's reacting with a burst, but then again he doesn't have anything, and so you see that this is my, uh, my action to say, okay, I'm, I'm fine with that, and the damage attack happens. And we walk again. And now it is the time of one of the most iconic decks out there, the Poro deck. Uh, we see that we start with a pretty good hand, uh, one drop into two drop into three drop, and also give it all our win condition. So let's skip this. 
that's also what our patched for robot gets, so scouts would be pretty insane. But unfortunately we can't really cast uh, him yet, uh, so we have to wait on that. Our opponent doesn't develop anything, so we can go for the open attack. And uh, yeah, let's wait. So let's see now. Lifesteal, not so valuable. Instead, since we have a Mystic Shot, we can kill uh, what our opponent just developed, waiting for a better keyword on Magic Warbot. We don't want to heal, this is a pretty aggressive deck, so we want an aggressive keyword. So let's see now, a second patch at Porobot. Quick attack, that, that's better. Or Overwhelm. Overwhelm, we have it already from the Mighty Porom, so might as well uh, cast the Mighty Porom himself. Let's wait for other keywords. Probably better keywords. Let's see if we get them. We can always attack pretty much with an elusive because uh, this can't be blocked, you know? So like this uh, is a unit which doesn't really want to block, but always wants to attack. Okay, now tough and the life steal again. Not very great uh, um, uh, keywords. So like again, now I can show you what I meant by mana spell. So like here, if we, if we bank the mana, we can cast give it all next turn because we are gonna have three mana spell and five mana from the next turn. So we can already go for give it all. Do we really want to go for it? Not yet, because we need a, a wider board so like we don't really hold that much this battle fury we can dis discard it pretty safely and then just because uh, i want to have a, a wider board uh, let's play one of the patched robots and uh, now we have to consider if he has a way to remove uh, all these daring poros we want to have at least one daring poro for when we go for give it all so like you know what let's go for a patched robot instead even if uh, like i said those are defensive uh, uh, keywords and not so great for an aggro deck or an aggressive deck. This, this is not necessarily very, very aggressive. Okay, so now we have the, the control of the board, which is always important in any card game. We also see Earth of the Fluff. Unfortunately, we, we can't really go for anything. We could go for an additional Daring Poro, but I kind of like the open attack here. I want to give my opponent a chance to develop a blocker, because he always has to consider for, for when you play a card, your opponent can play a card back. You you know? So like you, if you are not giving him the chance to play anything and go for the open attack, then he can only react with fast and burst spells, but occasionally he won't have them. So like, you know, units uh, are much more common than spells. So like, when you can go for the, the open attack, then go for it. How can I help? Okay, now this is a pretty interesting uh, situation in which if we play Earth of the Fluff, this is gonna be a huge, uh, huge uh, unit with a lot of keywords. Then we can play all those day Poros, which are gonna have uh, elusive anyway, and we can go for give it all anyway, which is uh, our mission basically. Again, since this, this has life seal, this attack is gonna come in first and then this is gonna heal. Instead, if we go for this, then we are gonna heal, but 20 is the maximum, and then this is going to deal damage. So, like, you also have to consider this uh, if you want to stay healthy. Okay, he's recalling that, so basically this won't strike into anything and so this won't uh, activate my life seal, but it doesn't really matter all that much. Like, the concept of this deck uh, is to see um, a lot of keywords uh, in uh, in play, like how, how do they play out. So like now we have 10 mana, which basically means that we can uh, um, cast two other units. Uh, let's probably go for a Lonely Poro, because this could give us another, uh, another keyword, which is Plunder. Uh, so Plunder is not really... it is a keyword, but it is not a keyword that uh, has something to do with... Uh, attacking or whatever. So now our opponent went for a quite strong combo, basically copying our insane unit. But we don't really care, because we can have uh, uh, three of them instead of just one. And uh, um, go for the kill anyway. Now, since he's in Ionia, let's see if he has the Nai, which could counter our spell, which he didn't have. So that's fine for us. So like you see also all those animations uh, uh, playing uh, mid-game. Like, yeah, pretty amazing visually. And then you see, like, all those uh, got uh, the, the stats and the, the keywords of uh, the other, the other, the big unit, basically. And so this is a pretty threatening board and quite a satisfying win condition. And yeah, when he dies, he, he still uh, gets back. Okay, 
okay guys and finally this is the most competitive out of the budget decks and now we're gonna see it in action as i said in the intro it is crucial to be aggressive so you want to kind of always to have a one drop and a two drop so like let's keep the two drop but let's search for a one drop which we did get and probably the best one the legends are here no one's the wiser Okay, now we have to consider uh, what is best, Legend Grenadier, Arachnoid Horror, or Imperial Demolitionist. Imperial Demolitionist deals burn damage, which you want to do at the end of the game, so it is a, it is a no. Legend Grenadier and Arachnoid Horror have the same stats, but Arachnoid Horror has an evasive keyword, which is Fearsome. Fearsome means that can only be blocked by enemies with 3 or more power, so like, is pretty much um, common that on turn 2 you play a unit with 2 or less. Uh, of attack. So basically Arachnid Oro will be unblockable this turn. This uh, keyword loses value the more the game goes on, as you see here, this can't be blocked. Instead the Legend Grenadier would have just simply be blocked. And so, like here we can deal 3 damage without uh, worrying about it. Legend of here on the same uh, note, uh, if we don't attack with, the, with there now, uh, she's gonna. She's not a good blocker because this will die anyway if we try to block with her. Instead, if we attack with it, at least we're gonna do one more damage to the enemy Nexus. So let's go for it and try to deal the most amount of damage to our opponent as we possibly can. So like already it's just turn two and we dealt four damage, which is a pretty good start. Like already we just need to. Um, make our opponent go at 7 health and we basically can kill him with Max and Fervor and Decimate, which is kinda great. Now we could go for Frenzied Skeeter, but Frenzied Skeeter has a nice uh, effect the turn it comes down, so instead we can play it uh, later. So now we can take the damage, we don't really care about taking damage, this is called a race. You can race up your opponent. Now we can go for Frenzy Skitter, basically uh, increasing the attack of Arachnoid Horror. And yeah, so like he's, he's pretty threatening, he's summoning a lot of stuff, but those two will connect, dealing 7 damage, and our opponent will be at 9. We just need 2 more damage, which we, which we can easily achieve from Imperial Demolitionist, uh, or the Transfusion, so let's go for the Transfusion right now. We don't really need the health on, on these, so let's keep those health here. And so yeah, let's go for uh, two additional damage because you see that those can't be blocked because all of your of these units have two or less power, and so they are unblockable since they have fearsome. So now our opponent is already at seven. We can just burn him out with Nox and Fervor and Decimate. But first, uh, let's probably go for uh, more units because we need a unit to cast the Nox and Fervor first of all, and because now we, we can block if we need to. So yeah, like, uh, let's take uh, value trades uh, where possible, let's also uh, trade the legendary deer because this is also gonna deal one damage, and instead let's keep the arachnoid horror so that we can have uh, uh, the most uh, damage output as we possibly can. And uh, yeah, we could also go for Precious Pet here, again another fearsome, we, we have basically the win on the open attack even without the burn. But of course we can also follow it up if he has heals or whatever. Now the only fearsome blocker here is this, this uh, 3 attack unit, so let's stun it, meaning that he can't block, and basically all those can get in. Let's see if he develops another blocker, okay, Karma, that's interesting, but again 2 of those uh, will get in, and uh, even if he blocks the most damaging one, a 3 attack unit, uh, two, 5 damage will still get in, so basically this is, this is a good game. As you see, a very fast deck. Uh, on top of that, we can like BM him and go for the Noxian Fervor on the unit that was blocked, so that this basically deals damage anyway because it's free damage. So yeah, for like a pretty aggressive. Win. So yeah, guys, that's it. If you enjoyed the video and want more content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also, turn on the notifications, otherwise YouTube won't notify you of my content. Also, enter my stream so that you can interact with me live, as well as entering the Discord server so that you can, you can interact and stay in touch with this amazing community that we are building. All the links that I just said are down below in the pin and comment and in the description, as well as also Twitter and Instagram. So, that's it for this video. Hope you liked it and find it useful. And as always, see ya!